and <clears throat> so we are our series live in mindfulness means living 24 out by 7. <clears throat> Take an example. Do Sam live as a Sam 24 by 7? Yes. Stephen lives 24 by 7 as is Stephen? Yes. The Stephen doesn't become Sam. Sam doesn't become Stephen. <laughs> we are going a little deeper. So now question comes, how long the journey is? Such a simple question and such a simple answer. Teacher says that you are real self. You declare that you are real self. The journey completes. Did you get it? Teacher always says that you are real self. Does your mind also declare 24 by 7 that you are real self? Journey is complete. Easiest. So if you are the real self, the mind declares, you are always in peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. Ignorance is gone. Knowledge is settled. <clears throat> Have you seen the cows? They graze very fast and then they sit down comfortably. They bring the food again into their mouth and they continue to chew, digest, assimilate. That is the life of a seeker. You hear the teacher, you understand it. And after that, after that what? After that, you contemplate throughout the day in order to live in the state of mindfulness. You contemplate and reflect. The more you contemplate and reflect, it is done. So that is the way to keep that knowledge, to keep that awareness all the time. So when you keep all the, this knowledge all the time in your mind, what is going to happen? Knowledge is realized. Ignorance is gone. <clears throat> I'm putting everything logically. So, but if it does not happen, no, no, I have a lot of problems, you know. I'm saying it's simple. The journey is complete. When the journey is complete, Teacher says you are real self. Does your mind also declare that you are real self? Say yes, journey is complete. How many times it happens during the day? <laughs> no, 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 I have a problem. Journey is gone. It disappears. So, when the mind keeps that knowledge all the time, I told you, I gave an example that uh, how long you remember brandy that you are brandy during the day, all the time. Brandy doesn't say I'm Jerry. So when the mind lives in that awareness that I am the real self, it is a complete purity of the mind. I'm linking the two. That is the complete purity of the mind. And when there is a complete purity, 
then it will not run after the world of people, place, locations for peace and happiness. I'm the real self. Finished. So how these conventional methods to purify the mind works, the universe outside is an opportunity for us to change the way we see the world outside. Our perception changes. The world outside is not going to change. It will remain as it is. So what, what our perception has changed? Our likes and dislikes, our anxiety, our upset, our duality, our conflict, they, they simply drop. They melt away. In any situation, with anyone, in any relationship. Why doesn't it change? Because of the impurity. So that is one side of the story. And the second side of the story I have discussed a couple of times that all of our achievements, success, prosperity are related to the existence, the world outside of people, of place. <coughs> that guy blocked my progress. We never say my body blocked my progress because of wrong eating. So I'm not aware. I'm not contributing. Do you see, see the beauty of understanding, beauty of the wisdom? We are ready to blame and complain over relations, the people outside, but when we look at the body is not able to make a right effort. Why? Because of my own way. So pay attention, all of our achievements, wealth, possessions and recognition comes from the world outside. So the conventional methods has one goal. What is that one goal? How to connect consciously, how to contribute, and how to uh, be grateful. Now differentiate the two. Impure mind is constantly juggling in the world with the desire. So if you have a desire, you have likes and dislikes. You have likes and dislikes, then you have an attachment and detachment. Then you have an anxiety, then you have an upset. And a long, there is a continuous series. I asked one question yesterday, day before yesterday. <clears throat> to a person, think of this, that how long we, how many times we were anxious, we reacted, we fought, we were in anxiety. How long? How many times? Maybe thousand times. Don't we feel bored about it? When there is some event, some food that we keep on eating, many a times that repeat eating causes the boredom. Repeat anxiety does not cause the boredom in your life. We take it for granted. Why we take it for granted? Because of the impurity of the mind. We don't take it for granted. We just simply take it for granted. Oh, there is a lot of stress and suffering in the world. We just take it for granted. Why we take it for granted? Because of the impurity of mind. So whatever mind thinks, wishful thinking, Oh, this impurity will go away. Ah, I need not to make an effort. That is the way the life is. Eastern wisdom doesn't work for those people. The impurity will continue. It will increase many fold. So that is why we have these conventional methods. Uh, to what is conventional? What is what when we say it's a traditional, it's a common sense. I tell you the conventional methods are just a common sense. I see a person who is in, and that causes the anxiety, I change my thinking. There and there. Simple. Normal. It's a common sense approach. In daily living, <clears throat> we do not wait. The moment you wait, the ego builds up. 
is ready to build up the anxiety reaction and duality. So you see not only the conventional methods has an ability to connect consciously, to contribute and being grateful, to participate in every activities. And that changes the life. It's a common sense approach. So when we do not apply the common sense approach, then the ego builds up. We will talk in detail about what exactly is the ego. Our masters have clarified it. How to use that ego and how not to use that ego. But just for the understanding. So it builds a strong ego and that ego creates a port around me with a lot of preferences, likes and dislikes, and reaction, and anxiety, and duality, and conflict. They remain accumulated in my mind, and they manifest <coughs> in my day-to-day -day living, in relationship, in a situation. So that is why I reminded you before also, so the five points of change. They are felt like a crow, they are focused like a crane, the sleep like a or rest, sleep like a dog, and filtering the unwanted and unnoted, un, unwanted thoughts in the food. So the first uh, conventional methods we have already covered. <clears throat> yes, now it's a lifestyle modification to prevent any unfavorable situation. Uh, and uh, conditions in our life. It's a shock absorber, I tell you. It is simply absorbs all the challenges of anxiety, of duality, of conflict. And we are living from a moment to moment. We are consciously, with love and kindness, with creativity, connected to the world outside. That was one aspect of the conventional method. So what is going to happen if you constantly contemplate, it will redefine your daily life, daily thought, daily speech, daily action. So when there is, you are redefining, you are purifying the mind. So the first is the yajna. Second is that I covered a little bit of charity. So don't take the charity as you understand it. We will understand the way the master understands. I told you about the master until he lived physically for 53 years. Every year for three days, he used to invite more than 300 seekers in the masters. And he used to offer everything. That is one way to give the charity. The charity in Eastern wisdom has been explained again with reference to connect, contribute, and grateful. You will get some idea and clarity about this charity. <coughs> One student lives in Britain and he came to my master. He brought a warm coat, winter coat, uh, that costed a couple of hundred dollars, maybe six or seven hundred dollars. It, it was the story of 20 years ago. <clears throat> so with love, with, with all the uh, love he offered that coat. So my master put on the coat, five, after five minutes he removed that. So there was another monk who uh, came to meet my master and he offered the coat in front of the person who gifted the coat to him. And the guy from the Britain got pissed off. He was, his, his face was full of anger and the reaction that I have gifted to my master, why he has gifted to the monk. So my master uh, realized 
He said that when you gifted the coat to me, it is my coat. Whatever I do, let me do it. Why you get upset? Did you understand? Why you get upset? You have gifted something to me. Now it is my property. Whatever I do, it's my choice. And the problem is that you are still attached to it. You are still attached with it. So you look at it. And that gave me a very strong, very deep impression in my mind. I still remember about 30 years back. <clears throat> So what used to happen almost 30 years back, I used to give all these teachings and uh, used to record in those days in the Sony Walkman. And uh, I used to give even the cassettes in those days. So I had a crazy mind on those days, why this, why this pra my practice should not be given to anyone. Everyone should seek a permission before anyone should do my practice. So once I got this incident, then I put everything on the YouTube. I never felt that it is my practice. Once I have taught and given you the practice, and it is yours. It is yours. So you see that charity has more to do with my impure mind. Again, the principle is the same, how I connect, how I contribute, and how I have to be uh, grateful. It has nothing to do with the quality. No, it has nothing to do with the quantity. It has to do with the quality. Again, remember, connect consciously, contribute, and grateful. Otherwise, Bill Gates, you know, he, he donated almost billions of dollars. He should have been a great seeker. It is not the quantity. So we are just talking about, we are understanding the, the word. There is only English, one English word for dan. That is the charity. So before we go deeper into it, the charity or the dan, which is known as the dan, the kshina, there is another word, bhiksha. So I will cover all the three to make it clear. Normally, we say in the modern world that it is a noble deed. It is to be given whatever you give something without any expectation from, of any return from those who receive the charity. Uh, it is also connected to the social life. Charity is a form of a good action that affects one's future circumstances. So people sometimes offer the charity that if I give you the charity, if the God will help me because I'm helping you. So again, an idea of selfishness is also there. Another uh, one uh, text uh, explains that living creatures get influenced through dhanam, through charity. Enemies lose hostility. Enemies or those with whom I have some differences. It has to do more with the mind. A stranger may become a loved one through the charity. I'm just giving on the surface and then we will. It is also a lifestyle management aims at emotional freedom. How emotional freedom? How emotional freedom can be achieved by this conventional method of charity? This is what we need to understand it clearly, and then we will see if we can apply. We are born with no possessions. We'll die with none. Any position. In terms of the wealth, home, clothes, we are born with no possessions at all, and we will die with none. Only 
when we are born, we continue to live our life. We accumulate those possessions in our, what we call our life. So if I keep that awareness all the time, it loosens the preferences of likes and dislikes in my mind. Because if likes and dislikes will continue, it will cause the impurity of the mind. The impurity will cause the desire. Desire will lead to delusion. It will build an egoistic life. So it's the entire chain is created. Second benefit, one of the most important benefit that I don't forget the goal of my life is to evolve and help everyone to evolve. Well, because in a sense, you know, I'm going to contribute. My honey, I'm going to contribute consciously to my honey, to my son, to my friends, to the society, to the nation. So that understanding of that I'm a part of the universe, I don't create my own universe by the ego. It expands the mind, it purifies the mind. Uh, just, you know, to have a, a clear understanding, sometimes people say that we should give food to the food as a charity, money as a charity, medicine as a charity. The highest charity is understood in the Eastern wisdom is the giving of a knowledge. Giving of what knowledge? The knowledge that helps you me to evolve that helps me to rise in consciousness so giving of a knowledge is also considered as a charity not only the medicine not only the food not only the and you protect someone from the miseries and the suffering that is also considered as a charity Think again. In a different way, I'm just giving that perspective and then we will go deeper. So why to give charity? To change the mind and purify the mind by generosity. Push the mind to think and reflect on our connection to the people outside. The earth, planet, society and the nation. Why we are doing it? Again, keep your focus there because we are conventional methods to purify the mind. <clears throat> so how it is going to help me purify the mind? It helps me to expand the mind. It helps me to dissolve the kind of a selfishness. So all contributions in terms of whether physical means or mental and the emotional means, it should help me to bring the emotional freedom. Then only I'm doing a charity. It should purify my mind. So I have to constantly think of it, contemplate and reflect. The mind lives in ignorance because of the desire. Desire means seeking peace and happiness from the objects in the world where they are absent. So I continue to live in delusion. I have to remove that delusion in order to purify the mind. So when the delusion is gone, I purify the mind. I'm moving a step by. There is a story in Eastern wisdom. You have to symbolically look into it. <laughs> When I'm close to the death, who is the best friend? A seeker asked, and the master said, charity. When I'm close to the death, who is the best friend? Charity. 
Then there are different ways of charities also that we give a land to someone, we give some possessions. Now you'll be surprised perhaps uh, people in this part of the world. Huh? Ashok, do you remember we used the word Kanya Dan? So Dan means charity, Kanya means daughter. Oh, so you give charity of a daughter? Yes, in a very positive way. We gave the how how it is expressed when one gives up his own daughter to a suitable groom. That is known as the charity. Don't take your mind somewhere else. <laughs> <coughs> So it is my responsibility. So they have added, these masters have added. It means, you know, I find, if I have a daughter, let me find the right groom. Let me check it and understand and offer the daughter to. That is also considered a charity. There is another way of the charity you might have. I don't know whether you have heard about it or not. <laughs> that people donate coins, wealth, equal to the weight of their body. We're just understanding at a primary level and then we will go deeper. And the knowledge I have already given you, the understanding of. You know, you see perhaps a concept of when someone dies and we we do a candle march when some famous people dies or there is some accident or there is some killings we have a we lit the candle so lighting the candle is also considered as a charity we'll understand we will have a total perspective about it i'm just giving you a brief <coughs> So first is this this kind of the charity. The second charity, <clears throat> the teacher who has passed on this knowledge, that is also, so in order to compensate out of the love you give to the teacher, that is the second division of the charity. And the third division is known as bhiksha. What is known as bhiksha also? Bhiksha normally means uh, the monk wanders like a beggar and uh, so that bhiksha means that the moment you see any monk, that is a tradition of India, the moment you see those uh, monk beggars, you always offer the food to them or you protect. But again, one thing more before we will go deeper uh, next time. <clears throat> I have to contemplate and reflect on what I possess. Did I get it at the time of the birth? No. It is constantly changing. Yes. It will continue to change. Yes. Do I have a clinging about anything that I possess? Yes, I have to remove it. Then I have to check my mind. What I can spare out of love to connect to the others. That is one way. To understand the charity, we will understand it in deeper way. Close your eyes. We will start with a journey. Eyes are closed. <clears throat> eyes are closed. If you find some concept, uh, very and your mind reacts. So first be clear before uh, you can ask me the question. So eyes are closed. 
first thing, my friends, <clears throat> now we are in a practice. Position of the body, eyes closed, and I have been repeating. We are following a series, live in mindfulness. How fast we are settled in a comfort. That defines the purity of your mind. Think, reflect on. We are still struggling with the body and the thoughts and feeling and images, and your mind has gone somewhere. You're not fully settled. And then we go a little deeper, being comfortable. So you see that from the day one, <clears throat> years back, I still use the word being comfortable is another step. But we go very deep into being comfortable. That is what the knowledge is. Knowledge and the practice should go together. So now see that. Uh, are you able to go deeper? You look at the neck joint. You are there. Means you are aware. So you also experience the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Yes. And after that, you go into the space. That space is the lane number two. Now I'm adding something more. After space, it is lane number two. You follow the knowledge. And now what about the lane number two? What about the lane number one? It is already there. Lane one, it is there. It is there, but not disturbing you. That is the point. <clears throat> Look at the shoulder joint. Then sensation, comfort, and steadiness. After that, there is a space. So now, after the space, you are clear. You are not participating. In lane one, I I think you remember, lane one, you are in lane two. How? By knowledge, with the knowledge, with practice, with experience. With knowledge, practice, and experience. So what happens then? What happens? This is the power of discernment and nothing. Discernment and dispassion. Just be very clear. <clears throat> we are using the same principles, but we move at a very subtler level. The mind becomes subtle. Another point, when the mind is subtle, it is pure. I use the word, when the mind is gross, it is impure. The entire body, from the top of the head to the toes, my friends. You see, I give the same instructions, but it changes its quality, its intensity, its level of awareness. <clears throat> that you have to pick up. So sensation, comfort, and steadiness. After that, you found some space there. At the same time, you also see the lane one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. Let it be. You're not participating there. There, let me there. You see, I learned from you. So I'm using the same phrases which you have shared your experiences. And now being carefree. Again, in carefree, you can use the same. <clears throat> lane one, lane two, lane three. Now, I think you are clear why I use the step being comfortable first and then being carefree. 
So we put the body in the state of sensation, comfort, and steadiness so that the mind becomes subtle. And now when being carefree, lane one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. Very good. You are participating there. Uh, no, no, I'm not participating. I'm participating with you, with the knowledge. Oh, knowledge. So let the thought come and go. Now this will work. But when I live in ignorance, the teacher keeps on saying, oh, let the thought come and go. It makes a sense, but it does not change us. And then, then we have been doing it with the mantra. Mantra means lane two, result in the lane three. So we are aware. We know unwanted and welcome thought continues to come, but we are free. We are minimizing the intensity and the frequency of those unwanted, unwelcome thoughts by replacing with the mantra. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Let there be happiness or well being for all. That is the meaning. Perhaps, uh, no, why perhaps? You, know, you all remember. We re recite, then we use the meaning, and then we go into the knowledge. So if uh, well being or happiness is the uh, essential nature of every living species in this world, including me. And that is why I'm saying it. Essential nature indirectly helps my mind to minimize the occurrence of unwanted, unwelcome thoughts because the mind starts believing that yes, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Meaning, let there be peace for all. So, uh, we convince the mind to remove the impurity that peace is the essential nature of every living species, everyone through their action seeking peace and happiness. What it means? Your honey is angry over you. Your honey is seeking peace by an anger. Why? They have not studied the Eastern wisdom. You have studied it. So your seeking of peace should be different. Your approach should be different. That is the essence of this mantra. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu. Let there be completeness in all, wholeness in all, holiness. You know, there are many words. But uh, if we understand it clearly, it points that I am complete in myself. Do I need to be attached or detached to someone? Look at it. That knowledge lives in the lane number two, and the mind is prevented not to participate with the lane number one. And when that is settled, mantra is realized. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Auspiciousness. Let there be auspiciousness for all means the knowledge, right knowledge. And when there is a right knowledge, it 
it comes with the joy. Knowledge in the joy. Previously, I told you that when there is a happiness or well-being, plus peace, plus completeness, results into auspiciousness. It is the same thing. Now you see that we normally think, you know, I have done a lot of practices, but uh, uh, the total complete change is not coming, so it means I should leave now. So we are keeping the breathing practice intact. And we are, so let us do it for three minutes today, I have told you directly. So looking deep inside the forehead, in the space, you start dropping Om Shanti gently there. Body remain in the state of sensation, comfort, and steadiness, and start breathing from the chest for three minutes. Expansion and contraction of the chest. Focus remain like a crane inside the forehead. Keep on doing Om Shanti. You are not forcing, it's a rhythmic breath. You acquire a rhythm of expansion and contraction of the rib case with Om Shanti inside the forehead, with the steadiness in the body continues. That will make you understand that the mind is not going anywhere, it is totally focused. Pay attention, expansion and contraction of the rib gaze. <clears throat> Your mind will try to trick, you know, three minutes is a big deal. I cannot do it. I can do it. You know, it has a lot of thoughts pertaining to that. That is lane number one. You are working on that. That is why I intentionally told you that we are going to do it for three minutes today. The moment any objection comes, I cannot do it. It comes from the same mind. And stop it, return to the normal breathing, continue with the Om Shanti and experience the change. I covered that topic. The knowledge and the experience are two different things. So continue to experience the changes, recognize, accept it, <clears throat> and we will continue the journey. Om Shanti continues, and now start with the belly breathing. This kind of a breathing, and you engage your belly, and it's a little longer breath. It's a longer breath. 
<coughs> Why longer breath? Lower lobes of the lungs are bigger than the upper lobes of the lung. Upper lobes of the lungs, when we inhale and exhale, there is an expansion of the rib case. So it makes a clear indication if we are breathing into the lower lobes of the lungs, means the belly goes out and goes in. Three minutes. The mind will surely say you no, yes, no, yes. Can you get out of that no and yes? You're getting out of the impurity of the mind. Mind wants to continue with its own habit. Pay attention. It's a little longer breath. Every time you inhale, expand your belly. Every time you exhale, contract and squeeze your belly. So that rhythm is maintained. In the beginning, it's not an easy thing to do, but gradually, if you persist, if you are consistent, if you're doing it regularly, you will discover the mind enjoys doing it. But if you follow the mind, means lane number one. Again. Then the knowledge goes in the background and we miss it. Then we have one million excuses. <clears throat> and stop the breathing. Om Shanti continues. Body remain in the state of steadiness. Recognize and accept the changes that is taking place consciously. Nothing is done unconsciously. So you are in control of your journey. And now we will go with belly and the chest breathing together. Om Shanti continues. Start. With a long, deep, and the hissing breath. Long, deep, in the hissing breath. <laughs> Normally, we say in the Tantra tradition, the lay number one completely melts away by the deep, long, and the hissing breath, both from the belly and the rib case. Um. 
Total expansion and total contraction also means complete inhalation, complete exhalation. It also means you inhale into all the lobes of the lungs and you exhale completely from the, all the lobes of the lungs. Your conscious first into the belly, the lower lobes, then into the upper lobes. You exhale again from the lower lobes and then the upper lobes. And stop it, do nothing. Start with the deep, silent, and slow inhalation, moving the mind in the spine with the singing of Om Shanti from the crown of the head to the tailbone. As you exhale, the mind rises with Om Shanti. I believe you remember. <coughs> you say Om, so start singing Om, and then you inhale, and Shanti ends at the tailbone. <coughs> During exhalation, Om begins at the tailbone and ends with the... At present, we are fully absorbed into understanding the principles of Eastern wisdom. <coughs> so don't uh, try to bring in any thought of the pertaining to the science if we are breathing more oxygen is absorbed but our goal is the purity of the mind my friends we will talk about that later fact is that a uh, couple of research studies says that the peripheral and chemo receptors are regulated, influenced, controlled. And that has a tremendous effect on the brain. Brain is mechanical mind. So change in attitude. So we may talk later. Continue the deep, silent, and slow breath. Om Shanti singing. Body remain in the state of steadiness. And leave this deep, silent, slow breathing also. Triangle, you already know it. Look the triangle pointing upward in the cave of your heart. And Om Shanti. With Om Shanti, the mind moves on a triangle clockwise and anti-clockwise. To check, now you have taken over the mind. Mind is not working on you. So you check and be aware that it becomes an easy, a play and a fun for you to drop Om Shanti on each side of a triangle. And uh, the mind can continue forever. That kind of an ease is there. What it means, it's a period of the mind. And when you feel that, then singing Om, pushing the mind from the center of a triangle in the cave of your heart, 
mind seemingly stops and you say shanti after that mind says i will maintain that status quo that state of emptiness oh yeah you may have a couple of experiences of ways and colors but ultimately they will set it down they will settle down But if the self-absorption breaks up because of the lane one, no issue, return again. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand 
your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences. We will share our experiences and bring the hands down. How are you, Stephen? Uh, good, good, thank you. Um, I'm living wisely. That, Good. That, I, that I could definitely say um, during during the meditation, um, it was it, I'm having a hard time explaining it because it was just it was it was it was a little bit challenging, but not challenging. And and it was almost as if your suggestion made me think about it. Um, you know, we're going through the breathing and. I, I my mind is saying, do you really want to be doing this breathing? And 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 I kept saying and I and I was actually I don't know if I was laughing if you saw it, but I, I was it, it's like everything in my life. I'm becoming so aware of everything instantaneously by applying these principles. So immediately I kept saying, OK, this is the mind and you're messing with me and I know you're messing with me. So do I continue to listen to you or do I just tell you to shut up? And um, it, it was it, it and this just went on during each one of them until we got to the triangle where finally it was like my mind said okay you win and it just left and i i, I found it to be funny throughout the entire th the, uh, the entire meditation so yes meditation should be funny and easy and uh, one thing that you said is wonderful you said that i'm living wisely can everyone declare this, that I'm also living wisely? The thing changes. That is what I, uh, at the beginning of a talk, I said that teacher told you, you are real self. Does your mind also declare that I am real self? The journey is complete. Done. It doesn't mean that you stop joining. <laughs> How are you, David and Jerry? <laughs> um, very good meditation. The um, the deep breathing uh, was met with very, very, very little resistance from the mind whatsoever. So after each different deep breathing exercise, I just got into this deeper and deeper state. And then after the Nyasa, I just was in bliss the entire time, and actually, it was very difficult to come out of it. So, very, very deep, Beautiful. But, but very aware. Beautiful, very aware. I want to put one more point here, so that uh, you live wisely and become aware. You means everyone. Your experiences, sharing of your experiences depends on where that I is sitting. So that I for Stephen was sitting in the intellect. For I, David, the way he, she, he explained, it was sitting in the life force. That is how he explained. Prana, that is how you explain that there was the least resistance. So it doesn't matter where it is sitting, but I become more and more aware. That is the main point. So that you learn that you become your own teacher. That's why I talked about it. How are you, Jerry? I'm good, thank you. Um, I don't know. It's difficult, actually, to describe that meditation. It was just... Um, I didn't have a lot of thoughts during the meditation and I just was there with your words, with the breath, with the ease of it. Um, and the mind, I noticed um, the, um, when we talked on Saturday and the description then of not wanting to, the mind doesn't want to get in the mud. Well, the mind doesn't want to label things. I've noticed the mind is, is like if if the mind does something, the mind corrects itself automatically. 
it's kind of an interesting thing yeah. into where even when you're in conversation, you just want to let things be. They don't have yeah. to have a label. But. It's a beautiful, Jerry. One thing is that once these principles are settled in the intellect, the mind corrects by itself. That is the beauty of this, this, this journey. Because the mind corrects by itself, not by an action, by understanding, by being aware. That is the beauty of this journey. You have touched upon another level, so that we will take up. How are you, Samir? Sir, it was uh, very deep. My eyes were totally wet when I opened after the meditation. I didn't realize during the meditation, but it was since I, I was totally didn't move and it was <laughs> very good. The mind was, you know, that I was sitting in the body. You see that wet eyes, it has to pertain. So the more and more we become aware where this I is sitting, and then we will find out what who is this I. That is the very clear understanding of the journey. That's really good. Wetting of the eyes obviously explains a deeper state of the calmness. So how are you, Sam? Good. I had a very easy time with the breathing today. But had a moment during the triangle, I was so absorbed, I, I, I forgot to breathe and I had to catch myself. I had to catch my breath for a second. Uh, but I was very absorbed. Very good. Total absorption. So breathing was quite easy. So I sat there and then I, I went into the mind. Totally absorbed. That's really good. Very good. So, Brandy, how are you? I don't hear you. Oh, but I can see through your smile. <laughs> yeah, very. That's good. I show how you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, it was a very good uh, and uh, peaceful and. Uh, I mean, uh, Saturday session we studied about the dissociation of the body, dissociation of the mind, dissociation of the breath. Yeah. So throughout the day time, I contemplate and reflect on that. So it is very That's useful, good. and uh, I mean, awareness is getting more and more. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I can see you have changed. You are changing a lot. Yes, and how are you, Vaibhav? We have done everything. Yeah, Teddy is not here yet. Thank you, sir. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Sir, it was good. It was, I was totally absorbed. Uh, it was very smooth. It's like that I am not taking care of my mind. So to follow the right path and then follow that, making him recognize that it can be free. It cannot be stick to the impressions. It can be live in freedom. So it was very, uh, very peaceful. Very good. Wonderful. That's what we should find the progress. You know, we have anesthesia. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it was very deep meditation. It looked like uh, all, all my feelings and uh, mind was one pointed. A lot of what's happening today in my body, even my teeth were shaking during breathing, but I was focused on wow. one point and this time it was so easy to be focused uh, and on this emptiness and i've noticed that i caught up feelings like in a childhood early childhood when i was a little child i felt like an alice in wonderland you know weeds and flowers are big and everything is unknown and you don't understand the world but you just feel it and you are uh, grateful and with love and peace so such feelings Beautiful. You are still a child. Yeah. 
Now I said this, now I'm going to say, we all are still a child. Then how come? Because what prevents me to remain as a child, lay number one. Now link this to. <laughs> lay number one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. They have been accumulated for so many years with the reaction, with anxiety, with the duality. They keep on repeating. If we remove the lane number one, we are still a child. But that's really, uh, that's uh, another way to put it. That's so wonderful. So remember this, uh, <clears throat> what I said. Teacher said, you are real self. Does your mind also declare that I am real self? If you say yes, how your mind dare to go into anxiety, reaction, anger, hesitation? Did I think I believe you got it? And the message that I want to convey. That is all for today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's meet again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.